What up guys? So first, since I haven't posted any of these despite doing them in the first Battle for Charity, I want to lay a couple stipulation ground rules on you know my take of one-on-ones. Is that I didn't want to use anything that was designed for the purpose of a one-on-one -on -one battle. Thus, just pick a dude from your box and throw him in. Don't change his item, don't change its moves. You know, just pick it up as it is and roll with it. It's, it's more fun if you know nothing's really designed for it and just makes for some hilarious matches as you guys are about to see. But first, we're gonna have a little bit of rock, paper, scissors. What do you guys think, eh? Let's go with rock, paper, scissors, shoe. Rock, paper, scissors, shoe. And rock, paper, scissors, shoe. How'd you guys do? She's trying to catch some birds. It's really, really funny. <laughs> All right, guys, since a normal 1v1 obviously wouldn't take very long and that'd be a pretty silly video, uh, I would only do these if I had six of them in one vid. So it's kind of like a 6v6, except not. Anyway, first one's with Chongo. I got a Zapdos, and he's got a Jolteon, which uh, at first we're laughing. We're like, what the heck are we going to do? And we're like, I don't know what Hidden Power Mine is. I don't know what mine is either. But uh, I forget that I'm actually neutral to Electric, so that was dumb. Um, I should have just roosted every turn just in case he was Life Orb, which of course he is. But uh, I didn't. I only thought of that after I clicked to move Hidden Power, and uh, he two hit KOs me. Otherwise, I might have been able to roost all him all day. I don't know. But uh, unfortunately, he's gonna pull that one out, guys. Darn. So I'm not off to a good start. But we got a match for his gold over here, and uh, I'm gonna try a little bit something different. Instead of trying to sweep, I'm gonna try and stall him out with this. So I'm a little worried he's gonna have like a lum or something like that. So I, I think he's going to want to obviously put some sort of powder on me. So I'm going to go for sub first. And uh, he made the wrong move and went for sleep powder himself and I block it. So I should have encored him there so he's stuck on sleep powder and I have a sub for the rest of the match and it's, you know, good game. As opposed to now there's like a 99% chance that I'm going to win instead. So uh, the difference is obviously pretty, pretty moot. Um, as I seat him up, I have my sub and... Uh, there's not a darn thing he can do in this scenario. So it uh, looks like subseeding is a pretty powerful strat. Um, it's a good thing I ended up, of course, being faster than whatever the heck he hap happened to bring. But, you know, that's what Jump Love does. So um, obviously it wouldn't work against any any sort of grass. But, um, yeah, not much to say. Subseed, slowly going down. I'm just going to sell up. I don't want to, I don't want to make sure, eh, I don't want to make sure. I want to make sure that I don't miss with Sleep Powder and get slammed with a sludge bomb so I'm just gonna sub get lefties and leech seed all the way down and uh, it's gonna finish him off eventually so that's uh that's the venom off booyah is he gonna get one more whatever doesn't matter this one's over <laughs> but uh <laughs> He goes on to 1 HP, and finally he's gone. Ah, took forever, but, you know, it gets the job done. Nice job, Jump Luff. So, next one versus Malk. Malk for the win. And here we go. Who did I bring in this one? I forget. Who did I bring? I brought Shedinja, that's right, because in the Battle for Charity, I had Shedinja versus Weevil, and I beat it. <laughs> it was awesome. So I wanted to bring him again, and I felt really confident. Um, I could have gone for Confuse Ray, and that would have had me need to get a 50% hacks move on this turn. Instead, I'm underground, and I hit him with a dig. But uh, this Shedinja is jolly. It's not adamant, so it doesn't finish him off. And I am left to get a crit Shadow Sneak. Ugh, it doesn't get a crit, but he does have Life Orb. So he's going to go down as well, and that's just a draw. That's hilarious. So we tied. I haven't tied in forever. And yet Malk seems to tie in like 50% of his tournaments, which, by the way, messes up all of our tournament battles. But, you know, whatever. That's how he rolls. We get ties. So far, I'm 1-1-1. One, one, and one. and uh, everybody's just doing 1 vs. 1s now. That's a lot of 1s, I just said. <laughs> but uh, So here we go again. I've got Blissey. Oh, yeah, because Gold was like, man, Xerxes, you'd probably bring a Bliss. I'm like, dude, I would never bring a Bliss to 1v1. Then I thought about it, and I thought, you know, that's probably a good idea. Let's do it. So I bring this piece of crap in, and uh, 
I'm worried of explosion. If he has explosion, it's just flat out over. But uh, I'm going to T-wave him first. I didn't expect to be faster, by the way. Because the thought process was that I'll soft boil up to reduce the hit until he gets fully paralyzed. And then I can either alternate with S-tosses and soft boils using parahax, Or I can just counter him for the win. And uh, he gets a crit, but I still have 300 hit points left. So that, you know, not too big of a deal. He's going to need two crits in a row, or perhaps a Stone Edge crit. I don't know why he didn't go for Stone Edge the first time. But uh, anyway, Stone Edge I take like half from. I just counter it right off, and then I can S-Toss for the win. Um, he does actually have Sucker Punch, which gets a Parahax on it, which is lucky. But it wouldn't have done 400 points, because hell, Stone Edge didn't do that. So even if it critted, I'd, I highly, highly, highly doubt it would do that. But uh, So Bliss for the win, that's pretty hilarious. And then Starmy Girl shows up, and uh, this guy, I was really confident about this guy, because uh, he's got Sucker Punch, he's got a Focus Sash, and he's got Counter, so I was like, man, he's, he's, this is a really good dude to bring in. He was uh, one of my leads in my Mono Poison tournament that I had, but uh, unfortunately comes a Butterfree, I'm like, crap, I can't Earthquake it, it's going to use special moves so Counter doesn't work. And because it's going to put me to sleep, Sucker Punch isn't going to work either. And obviously Stealth Rock isn't going to kill something. So this just, oh man, this sucks. And then I, I decide that I need to predict what turn I wake up and hit it with a Sucker Punch then. And I need to do that twice, which needs I need early wake-ups. But that was a faulty train of thought. Um, that was under the impression that I would lose a point of power points if I use Sucker Punch and stay asleep, which I don't. So instead of just clicking Sucker Punch every turn, I was trying to predict it, and I didn't get one off when I could have. I woke up earlier than I expected. So now I just need to go for it every turn, which I'm going to, and I get another early wake-up, but it's not enough to finish it off, unfortunately. I think I get it here. Yeah, I get it here. It's not enough to finish it off. So if I would have had it on the first one like I should have if I wasn't stupid, then I would have been able to finish it off, though at the same time... If she was a little bit more careful, she would have PP stalled me out of Sucker Punches. So, it's kind of a wash. Could have won, could have lost, but bah! So, anyway, this puts up the sixth one versus Coops. And uh, I need to make sure I pull this one out if I want to have a positive record. And uh, it's going to be tough because I'm bringing kind of a joke. But, you know, that's the whole point. So, he's got Rhyperior, and I'm like, oh, this is not good. And I've got a... Uh, I don't I remember the thing's name right now, but I'm just going to stockpile up, and I've got to hope, 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 hope that I can take two of these hits. So, Earthquakes me, and yep, I can take a couple of them. So, I'm going to stockpile one more time, and the Earthquakes again. So, it looks like I'm going to be able to stall them out, or not stall them out. Well, I guess, yeah, stall them out. But uh, I'm going to have to recover here. I don't want to take a chance with that. And, uh... I'm just going to need to get up some Swords Dances, get up some Recovers, because I realize now at this point that if he gets a critical hit, I'm dead, no matter what. So, because that very first hit that I took almost 50% on, that was with the plus one stage already. So, take away that plus one stage, and then double the damage, I'm going to die. So if he gets a crit, I'm dead, and I need to get three Swords Dances up, and then try to kill him with Rock Slide, which is not exactly very threatening versus Rhyperior, which has mad defense and resists it. So, meanwhile, during this, I have to recover the whole time, so there's tons of chances for him to get crits. And it's really, really dicey, you know? But there's there's nothing I can do. That's really what it comes down to, is will he crit or not? So, um, I'm definitely doing the best I can. Uh, I don't Because of that reason of the crit, I don't get the third stockpile up. Um... I'm, I would be able to take one more Earthquake in the middle of those, but it would take one more turn to use that stockpile, obviously. So I don't want to waste that one turn. I suppose it could be an investment in theory, but, uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't go for it because it's not necessary. I just want to get these dances up, these Swords dances, as fast as possible and start hitting him as soon as I can to limit the number of turns he can uh, um, throw a Quake at my face. Um, he is Choice Banded, so that's why he's stuck on it. Instead of uh, Stone Edge, I guess he didn't want to risk missing. But uh, I'm looking at about 25%. Um, lucky, lucky, lucky me. I get two Rock Slide flinches off. Um, and it looks like there I just did some more minimum damage as he's at a little bit higher than 25%. So I'm not going to finish it off here. He's going to hit me down. And this leaves me with a choice. Do I go for Rock Slide 
and risk a miss if I miss I'm dead or do I go for recover and give him more chances to crit me um, I'm going to play defense because I just had a feeling I got two flinches already Hax is going to come against my favor it has to so I'm going to play for the recover first give him a chance to crit me it doesn't happen so now I need to hit rock slide and I hit rock slide so it looks like in one versus one matches, the Hax Gods are in my favor. Even in the Battle for Charity a long time ago, I had some pretty good luck in my one versus one matches. So, uh, if only I didn't make a couple mistakes without roosting and without sucker punching, I would have a nearly flawless record right here with that one draw sitting out in the middle. But uh, here's the last one of the night, guys. Um, obviously, I've already done six, but I figure if this is the first one, I'll throw in a bonus match for a seventh fight. And... Uh, I've got Locust versus Gyarados. I could have subbed um, knowing Stonage is going to come, but I didn't think I'd be faster on the very first turn. And I figured if I'm slower, then it's irrelevant whether I sub or air slash. So I decide to sub now. He doesn't miss. And now the proper move would be to actually air slash, thinking he'll just waterfall to break my predicted subs. But I didn't make that proper move. And then he must have forgot about speed boost, not seeing it when sub was up or something. Um, cause he went for a dragon dance to be faster and that just really, that's just totally seals his fate, makes this flinch irrelevant and it, uh, it takes him down with that regard. So a lucky, uh, stone edge miss for me there, even despite another misplay. So you know, I played like dirt in these, but I went four, two and one. So I had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll check you next time. Peace.